The topic of the day is power. 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 And we talked so far a lot about energy. We talked about different forms of energy. We talked about gravitational potential energy. We talked about kinetic energy. We talked about developing uh, energy by doing work, forcing something over a distance. So we got a, a few different ways to talk about energy. But power kind of rides on the, the coattails of energy. No, oh, not e equals mc squared. Oh, the neutrinos? Uh, the possibility they might go faster than the speed of light? What's that? Through the sun without being affected? I don't know. I don't know the details of it. I would suspect so, though. Oh, that fast? No, they don't have it conclusive yet. You should go tell them off. <laughs> Alright, power is the rate at which work is done, or you could say the, the rate at which energy is delivered. So okay. is it like work over time? Yeah, you're right. Just from the definition, you can almost conjure up what the equation must be, right? Mm -hmm. If I know that power is by definition the rate at which work is done, rates typically mean that you're doing something divided by time, right? So if I wanted to rephrase this as an equation, I would probably say that power is the amount of work, W, divided by the amount of time that goes by. What would the units be? Yeah. Joules per second. Joules per second. Yeah, it is. So people do short form joules per second to be watts. OK? Now the problem here is. Can you see that I've got two W's? That's upsetting. I don't like having two W's. So, <laughs> I don't like having two W's. So what I'm going to say is that instead of writing work, I'm going to recognize that work is the same thing as saying change in energy. So I'm going to rewrite, rewrite this equation to make it a little more friendly in terms of units and variables not sort of repeating themselves. You don't want to have two Ws. So I would say that a nicer way to write this might be that power is equal to the amount of energy that you are able to give to something, delta E, change in energy, divided by change in time. Now the, the type of energy that you're giving to something might be the kinetic energy you give to it. It might be the gravitational potential energy that you give to it. So this is a nice general way to write it. We're going to leave it without a subscript. It'll just be the change in energy. Okay. So having said that we've talked about EG and EK, yeah? Are you using that uh, delta E for like work now? Well, delta E is the same thing as work. It's always been the same thing as work. Yeah, but like, are you going to start playing that instead of like the W? Yeah, I'm going to start using it instead of W you now. Just because we got watts and, and work, it's going to get confusing. Why do we use work in the W for work in the first place here? I don't know, it's sort of tradition, I guess. Yeah, you should, you should do that next week. It's in the textbook. I'm, 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 I'm trying not to be disagreeable with the textbook. That's really what it comes down to. Okay. All right. So let's say that I want to know how much work I do on something to raise it up a set of stairs. Oh, we might. We might run upstairs. But let's say that I, for example, have a person that's running upstairs. Okay. These are some big stairs, OK? It's kind of hard to take a ruler and measure the height of stairs. Like, you might be able to get up to the top of stairs and, and drop down from here to here, like maybe a measuring tape. But typically, it actually is kind of hard to measure the height of uh, a staircase. How could you do it without dropping a measuring tape from here down to here? Yeah? Well, if the steps are the same size, you could measure one and then Steps. Sure, why not? That's pretty practical. So assuming that you've had a good builder, you could figure out the height for a step and then count by the number of steps. So one, two, three, four, five steps. And
and you'd figure out what the height is for the whole thing. So let's say that I do have a, a step that's, what's a good step height, do you think? One foot, two foot, a foot, foot and a half. Give me a metric, come on. None of this one British meter. units. Point, point three five, five, seven, point three, three, three meters? Yeah. A third of a meter? For one step. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You want to do a quarter of a centimeter? A quarter of a centimeter? 22 centimeters? Okay, well, if it's 20, you guys that are in shop class, you say it's 22 centimeters for, a for an average step? Okay, well, let's make it 22 centimeters. Let's say that a height, height of an individual step is 22 centimeters or 0 0.22 meters. I got five steps, so the height of the whole thing is going to be equal to 5 times 0 0.22 meters. 5 times 22. 110? Yeah? So 1.10 meters tall. Not that far up. Now if I want to know how much energy, remember we're talking about finding a change in energy, I want to find out how much energy this person gave to themselves, essentially, mechanical energy they gave to themselves by taking themselves up to the top of the stairs. We're talking about how much the gravitational potential energy changed. So if they start off from rest and they end up at rest up at the top here, ta-da, up at the top, we could calculate how much the EG is if we know the person's mass in kilograms. So the mass, nice, nice uh, mass for a person. Let's do a, a nice round number. Let's say that they have a 40 kilogram mass. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we got EG is going to be equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity times the height at which you arrive at the top. Because it starts off at a height of zero, so the change in EG is going to be zero minus whatever we calculate here. Sorry, this minus zero. This is EG2. So the mass is 40 times 9.81 meters per second squared times 1.10, oh nuts, meters. <laughs> Ran out of space, 1.10 meters. What's the EG for this fellow? 1.1 times 40 times 9.81. Angus, you got it? Four hundred thirty-one point six four joules. Anybody want to second that motion? I'll second that. Yeah. Oh, motion. Motion carries. The motion carries. Now let's say that this person is able to gain that much energy, or give themselves that much mechanical energy getting up to the top. What's a reasonable amount of time to take to, to climb a set of stairs with only five steps? Sorry? How? What's a reasonable amount of time it should take you to climb five steps? Running up. Why not one, running oh, up? One second. One second? Yeah. Like, like one one thousand. You jump up five stairs? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's say that the amount of time it takes to get up these stairs is one point. Let's, you know what? Let's say we got a really good stopwatch. We got it to be 1.05 seconds. Oh, didn't quite make it in one second. 1.05 seconds. Let's figure out how much power this person was able, able to develop as they went up. So the power that they are able to, to develop is changing energy, which is really the changing gravitational potential energy, divided by the amount of time that goes by, which is going to be 431.64 joules divided by 1.05 seconds. How much power? No guessing. 411? 411? Point zero zero eight five. 0085. Sorry? 0.085. 0.085. And we could say joules per second or we could say watts. So we could say, oh, this person used 411.085 watts. Now, you might think of another device that has watts on it. What's another device that has watts on it? Oh, so yeah. 
Light bulb. Light bulb. Can you convert running energy into watts very white watts used for a light bulb easily? Yes. Uh, yeah, at the science center, yeah, you sit on the bicycle and everybody yeah. Yeah, watches the first mill attached to a turbine. Yeah, you might be able to get mechanical energy to turn into electrical energy in that way if you have a treadmill with a turbine. Is this person going to be turning electrical, or their mechanical energy into light bulb energy? No, no, no. no that's, it takes a little bit of apparatus to harness that kind of energy and convert it into another form. In this case, we're using biomechanical energy, the like chemical energy in, in your, your fat cells maybe, or that you were digesting this morning after breakfast, and we're converting that chemical energy into mechanical energy. And the mechanical energy is at this point locked up in gravitational potential energy. Okay? So, but we did that in a certain amount of time. So how could I, this is a certain amount of power, 411.085 watts, how could I produce more power climbing up these stairs? Me as a person. How could I produce more power? Yep. Do it in less time or use more work? Okay, so I could do it in less time. What if I did it in exactly half the time? So what's half of 1.05? 0 0.5. 0 0.5. 0 0.525? Is it 5? Half that time. Yeah. So let's say that I found it in delta E over not 1.05 seconds, but 0. 5 to 5 seconds. And without even putting in this delta E, can you do this math in your head? If I half the time, what's going to happen to the power? Double. Double. If I half the time, I'm doubling my power. So I'd be talking about having a power now of 822 watts. See that that's, that's about double of that? If I can run up in half the time, I'm doubling my power. And you try it. You try and run up in half the time. You run your fastest up the first time. The second time, try and half that. Good luck. You actually have a maximum power outage for your body, right? You can only put out so much power. So if you really wanted to, to not challenge yourself, the first time you'd maybe walk up. And then you say, oh, I bet you I can double my power. And then you run up the second time. Yeah, you could do that, absolutely. What would be another way to double your power outage? Yep. Yeah. Push really hard. Push really hard. How could you push really hard? Right now, I'm just pushing against my own gravity. What what could I do? What's that? Go twice as high. Okay, so I could double the height to which I go to. That's another way to double my power outage. Maybe find myself a twice as tall staircase. What's another way? Yeah. Double your weight. Yeah. Yeah. Take a buddy, buddy that weighs the same amount as you, same mass as you, I should say, and put them on your back. So run up the stairs with a piggybacker. Don't do that. Okay? But if you were to run up the stairs with a piggybacker, you could double your power really easily. Now, hold on. Here's the assumption. Shh. If I want to double my power by throwing a piggybacker on my back, what would have to be true about my time? It would have to remain constant. Yeah. So if you run up as fast as you can the first time and do it in 1.05 seconds, the second time you're doing it with your buddy on your back, good luck. It's actually pretty hard to double your power outage. It really is. And you know, the interesting thing, we can do some of these experiments to see whose power outage is, or power capacity is greater. And I've, I've done it. Well, we're going to do it in this class. But sometimes you take these, these little skinny sprinters, and the little skinny sprinters can get up to the top so, so quick. And so that time value shrinks down to very little. What, is that, what would you expect that would do to the, your power? Yeah, you think it would go up. However, built into that energy is what? Mass. So, oh my, 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 my. The mass is battling against them. Then you get these great big football players, maybe. They have a lot of mass. mass. What's going to be true about their time, maybe? It's actually quite slow. Maybe slow. But if you get some, what, what position in football is big but quick? Anybody know football well enough? The end. The, oh, 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 the linebacker maybe. Yeah, you get the linebacker. Sometimes you get a linebacker in a physics class. You know, how many times is that going to happen, right? Because there's only so many linebackers, not because linebackers don't take physics, but because there's not too many linebackers, right? And the law of averages, you don't get that many there linebackers. Are fewer, there are fewer linebackers on take physics. Yeah, exactly, okay? So let's say you do get a linebacker, though. If you get a linebacker running up the stairs, you got a nice mass. Maybe you're going to get a great time, then you get a lot of power. It's hard to get the combination, a massive person and a quick person. That's a hard combination to get. It's pretty easy to get a, a little quick person, and it's pretty easy to get a big slow person, 
Because it's hard to lose, it's hard to move a lot of mass. It just is, whether you're muscular or not. It is. It's hard to move it. Right? Yeah. And even you see some of the bodybuilders. See some of the bodybuilders, and this is something you want to watch out for, ladies and gentlemen. You go to the the gym and you do your bodybuilding. What do you notice when you see the guys on the, the bodybuilding machines? Where are all the muscles typically? In their arms. And you see these crazy looking people. They got little chicken legs. You see them? I see them at the gym. Chicken leg people with arms as big as my thighs. <laughs> right? You seen them? And they can, I bet you they could lift a truck. But you put them on a staircase. They gotta lift those arms. Right? Like with their legs, which, by the way, they haven't always been working out because they figured the jeans are going to cover them up most of the time, right? Because <laughs> like, a lot of people are doing it for like the aesthetic look, like want to be big and, and bulky. Not everybody, but you know, you see the people, right? So they wear the jeans over their little chicken legs, and they can't hardly run up the stairs, even though in their minds they're very fit people. But, oh my gosh. This is not the kind of person that I, I want to be if I'm uh, living near a volcano, right? If you live near a volcano, I would rather be working on my legs every day. Every day I'm doing squats if I live by a volcano, because I want to be able to run to high ground, get out of the way of the magma. So there's, there's certain things that maybe you work out for, for different purposes. Anyway, power, power. There's different ways to modify your power. Get more massive, get more quick, or take less time. Ways to modify your power when you're climbing stairs.